Day three of our face-to-face interviews with candidates in Mayo running for the general election on November 29th. And today we're joined in studio live by Alan Dillon, uh, Minister for Housing with Responsibility for Local Government and Planning, uh, who of course ran in the previous general election for the first time and was returned with a whopping 5,198 votes. Alan Dillon, good morning. Good morning, Tommy, and to your listeners. Will you need more than 5,000 votes this time? I certainly will. Um, And firstly, just to acknowledge and thank all those who voted for me previously and and put their trust in me. Uh, I love representing Mayo, um, the people of Mayo in government, and certainly uh, if re-elected, my key priorities are to deliver better health care for the county, uh, more affordable homes that supports families, individuals and couples, to purchase their home, improve our planning laws, while also uh, increasing investment in key infrastructure. And here in Mayo, we need better roads, we need better rail, childcare, broadband, and also we need to protect the family farms to make them more sustainable, uh, while ensuring that we've more investment into our community and sporting facilities. Did we not need to be doing all of that in the previous five years? Because a lot of, of the people listening uh, will say that, you know, Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, Sinn Féin are now promising all sorts of, of uh, promises if re-elected to government in the next five years. And, you know, you do have to ask the question, well, you know, if these things are so pressing now, why were they not as pressing five years ago? Well, they certainly are. And every single day that... Uh, I had the honour, I have the honour to, to represent this county. Uh, I've worked tirelessly to deliver real results for the people and its communities. Um, and certainly we have made progress in many areas, in housing, in health, uh, in community development. Uh, but we need to do more uh, and more is required. Uh, and that's why I'm seeking uh, re-election. Uh, second term for any politician is the toughest. Um, but certainly I have uh, a good record and uh, I can prove my worth as a TD for this county. Uh, I have achieved a lot. Uh, I have a lot more to do. Um, but certainly I have led from the front. And, uh, you know, I suppose in my relative short political career, I've made it from the back benches to a ministerial role. Uh, and I've led the Fine Gael Parliamentary Party uh, as its chairperson. And I suppose that's the kind of leadership that your listeners want from their po- politicians. But now I'm more determined uh, to work even harder. Uh, and I suppose people want politicians who have integrity, who are hard working who are transparent uh, and uh, for those who are fortunate to be elected, um, you're answerable to the people. And these and, and this election is certainly a defining election for in, on many accounts in how it will shape our future over the next five years. Let's talk about housing because you're in that department, uh, Department of Housing. Um, derelict shop fronts, derelict buildings in our towns and in our villages. We have so many people trying to you know, get planning permission to build a house on their father or mother's farm. Uh, we have so many people on waiting lists, both on council waiting lists and, and for social housing. It's, it is a massive, massive problem. And I know that the government have tried a lot of different schemes. You, you'll argue that I suppose many of them are working. But the reality is that we still see so many problems in housing. Yes, and it's it's the biggest uh, societal challenge that this government has faced. And when Fine Gael took over in government back in 2011, uh, as you can uh, imagine, the construction sector completely collapsed. Uh, the country was in an economic recession. Uh, when Indy Kenny became Taoiseach, um, he built back uh, our country um, from the worst economic collapse in, in the history of the state. And, and certainly Fine Gael were central to the recovery to where we are now. Uh, and we did initiate uh, some key uh, housing policies at that stage that are coming to fruition uh, as we see today. Uh, and one of them was the Help to Buy scheme, which provides uh, much needed support for young people, families, couples uh, to secure a deposit or to um, save for a mortgage. Uh, and we've seen over 50,000 people um, received a help to buy scheme, but also we established the Land Development Agency, which is responsible for pub, for delivering uh, housing on state land. And we have a really strong pipeline of delivery, not just affordable, social, but also cost rental, uh, which is the first of its kind to be introduced under the Housing for All policy. Uh, and to your point, a real scourge around this county is vacancy and dereliction. And we established the Cree Cunaha vacancy refurbishment grant, which is critically important to uh, bridge the affordability for those to bring existing stock back into use. Uh, And we've seen a huge uptake here in this county. 
uh, with over for, with over forty applicants now who have received uh, their their uh, payments uh, to the tune of two million euros. Uh, and Mayo County Council are doing a wonderful job. We've uh, introduced uh, vacancy officers in each of the local authorities across the thirty one uh, councils, and they're working tirelessly to work with individuals. Uh, to bring these properties back into use, forty sounds very low. F- from fr- from from over over an application, I think that in Mayo County Council is over four hundred applications. Four hundred that okay. have been approved. Sorry, but okay. the final the final drawdown uh, may be relative small. But Fine Gael itself is looking to um, in- enhance the scheme itself and look for uh, interim payments to be made uh, during the construction phase because this payment is made at the end when. The property itself is livable and we feel that stage payments would be uh, much easier for a lot of people who may have cash flow problems. But, uh, you know, these grants are substantial, up to €50,000 uh, for a vacant property, up to €70,000 for a derelict property. Uh, but we know that more is needed to be done. And I take Castle Bar as an example where we put out a call for the Urban Regeneration Development Fund, call three was to tackle vacancy and dereliction. And there's a number of buildings uh, that have been included, especially on Ellison Street, uh, that will be repurposed back into residential use. We've also uh, looked at the planning exemptions around uh, old pubs uh, and vacant offices. And we have seen a substantial increase in the number of units that have been put back into residential use, uh, even in Ballyhonas. Uh, and in other uh, villages and towns, but more needs to be done. But I think this government policy uh, is working. Um, the national vacancy rate now is down below 4% in Mayo. It's still uh, too high, but we, we continue to need to roll up our sleeves and encourage more people to utilise this uh, affordability, okay. uh, affordability scheme. Five years ago, and I'm not saying it was you that said it, but, but your party was adamant that they were going to cut a lot of the red tape around planning applications and planning permissions. And, you know, there's loads of calls coming here from people who are just frustrated. They want to build a house uh, out in the countryside and the, the, the challenges and the hoops and the obstacles that are being put in their way all of the time leaves them so frustrated. Yeah, and, and I, I, I accept that, but I also accept that this government has uh, introduced one of the largest uh, planning reforms uh, in the history of the state. It's the third largest um, bill that has gone through the Oireachtas in the Planning and Development Bill. Uh, I was central to that as minister over the last six months. Uh, bringing it to the various committee stages uh, into the Shannon and, and back into the Dáil. Uh, and that will provide uh, people with more consistency, clarity and quicker decisions within our planning system. Uh, and I understand um, previously where people um, felt that the planning system itself um, was very uh, spurious. It, it didn't give consistency, especially on uh, decisions that went to on board Panola. But now we have statutory timelines Uh, With the board, we've resourced our planning uh, system within local authorities, but also with on Commission Panola now, which will be enacted following the the, the signing of this bill into law. But to answer your point, um, you know, I understand, you know, in rural areas, there is challenges around, um, you know, families uh, and um, children building on their own land. Uh, And certainly what we want to do is make it easier for people to do that. And I know Fine Gael, if given the opportunity to get back into government, uh, we will publish the rural uh, guidelines on planning uh, and we will, in one sense, uh, ensure that there's transparency and clarity around both the social and economic need for those who want to live within their community, to raise a family, uh, to live, to work uh, and grow old. And uh, while... We understand the importance of one-off rural housing and that is central to uh, balanced regional development. And I know here in Mayo, uh, we want to sustain that fabric okay. within rural areas to ensure that, you know, even the GAA itself, uh, to reverse any decline in rural depopulation, we want to ensure that people can live within their communities. And certainly through the uh, service sites initiative to cluster developments, we can do that. Uh, I was even in Tormacady most recently uh, talking to the chairman of the Tormacady GEA and he is very much determined to see more housing being developed in that area. And we want, I want to do that in all parts of this county and okay. I'll work with the local authorities, I'll work with communities uh, to achieve that because, um, you know, we have a great opportunity now 
um, with record investment in housing over uh, 8 billion euros. Uh, Fine Gael wants to lead the way in, t- in delivering over 303,000 homes up to, tw- up to 2030 uh, and that will be a combination of affordable social and private development and uh, it's really, really important that our planning system is fit for purpose. We've made huge strides in that regard uh, and we know there's okay. much work to be done. Alright, I- I'm going to kind of segregate th- th- uh, all of the various questions into categories. In a minute I'll talk to you about roads but I want to talk to you about pyrite first. Uh, because there's been an awful lot of questions in in relation to pyrate effective homeowners in Mayo. Uh, and in fact, at the end of the programme, we're going to be speaking uh, with Josephine Murphy, co-chair of the Mayo Pyrite Action Group. But one question that has come up a lot, Alan, is why wasn't the retrospective grant increase for defective block o- uh, homeowners uh, actually sanctioned before the doll was dissolved? Because that was promised, was it not? Yes, uh, uh, and as part of the review on the enhanced defective concrete block scheme, uh, a key um, priority of that was the revision of the cap, but also of the SAAI rates. And um, while a memo went to Cabinet and was approved in relation to increasing the grant from €420,000 to €462,000 and also the the, the grant rates uh, to the current uh, uh, construction uh, standards, um, it was indicated that primary legislation would have been required in order to uh, retrospectively go back uh, to those who uh, had a, um, a determination on the costs for uh, demolition and, and construction. So we, we will, uh, I suppose, honour this commitment if given the opportunity. And, and certainly I understand uh, the real anxiety and stress for many people who have undertaken uh, construction uh, uh, in the current climate where costs have in, been inflated due to, to many, many uh, factors. Uh, and it's a real issue. I was back in Park Nicola in, in Westport uh, last Friday uh, listening to homeowners and I suppose understanding uh, the challenges that they're facing. And while we have made, uh, you know, strides to try and enhance the scheme, uh, we in Fine Gael in the first six months want to do a comprehensive review in relation to what homeowners are telling us on the doorsteps because it is a real issue that's affecting Mayo. Uh, in all parts of Mayo, there's more, um, you know, uh, cases that are that are coming to our attention. Uh, and, you know, I have worked with, with you know, North Mayo Pyrite and Mayo Pyrite groups. I certainly, uh, you know, was to the fore in relation to try to, to, to listen to their concerns while not part of the, the Joint Oireachtas Housing Committee, I did attend some of the sessions to ensure that Mayo had a voice, okay. uh, that the representatives were listening. Uh, and we know we need to do more. And that's why it's really important. I'm committed to ensuring that those who are affected here in Mayo are retrospectively paid. I'm also here to listen to what other f- you know initiatives need to be included in the enhanced scheme uh, around foundations. Uh, and I'm also pleased to see that you know, the likes of the SAAI grants have now been included for those who may have got a grant previously but can now achieve a second grant and I think that has been a welcome improvement along with the increase in the cap. Okay, question for Alan Dillon. Uh, Castlebar Educate Together, urgently calling for a new school, yet there's been little action. What has Alan Dillon to say about this? And and I've met uh, many of the pupils. I've met um, Principal Sarah Calvey, its Board of Management, in fact, they were up in Leinster House uh, last weekend and it is a real frustration of mine uh, and I'm sure of the parents in the school community that... What you know, do you think should happen hasn't though? Been made in, re- ...in regards to this. The department itself needs to accelerate the process around the acquisition um, and we need to ensure that there's a clear sight on delivery here because it's not practical for this school to operate across three campuses uh, uh, from, you know, child welfare and safety issues, from a practicality around school management uh, and certainly um, the site that has currently been identified, uh, the old hat factory in Castlebar on the Newport Road, is an ideal location. It has sustainable uh, transport. Uh, it is centrally located within and the town. And who owns that now? At the minute, they're going through the acquisition phase. Okay. So, again, uh, we, we we were told that it's it's commercially sensitive until the the, the site itself is purchased, uh, and again I know the school itself is is very anxious to see this coming 
to a conclusion. I have given them uh, as much support uh, as possible. I have facilitated a meeting with Minister uh, Norma Foley previously uh, and, and again the frustration was the lack of follow through. So we, we want to see action on this. Um, the school itself deserves it. Uh, we have made record investment in education in many areas across the, the county and you know we have a proud record uh, in this government, uh, especially here in Mayo, uh, new schools being built in, in St. Breed's Special School in Castlebar. We've also seen additional accommodation um, being delivered in Charlestown, in Ballantober, Ballyhane, uh, and many other uh, okay. areas around but, the county. But have, but you, have you gotten any indication from Norma Foley or her department as to like how soon you know, the, the sensitive um, so, negotiations around the, the commercial sensitivity of, of the old hat factory could be resolved. Well, well, well. all I can say this morning, Tommy, is that um, we have uh, got agreement that the school building and planning unit will meet with the patronage uh, and the school management in relation to progressing this. And do you uh, know when? Uh, I, I would say within the next two weeks, three weeks, that they would all sit around the table and have a clear okay. plan plan of action because I know the, the seriousness of this situation and certainly I want to see progress in this regard. Okay, roads. A huge number of people and particularly for, for Belmullet to, to, to Castlebar Road. We, we all know that it's, it is a disgrace, isn't it? Well, it is challenging and, and we have made online improvements uh, especially in Glen Island Bridge and I, I've read, met with the, uh, the committee around um, the R312 and Yes, more investment is required. I know uh, um, there is a current application that's being processed to the Mayo Roads Authority um, and significant up online upgrades have been um, performed, but uh, more needs to be done. We have seen record investment in roads in Mayo over the last number of years. The N5 Westport to Castle Bar, over 300 million euros. We've also seen Balahedrine to Scrimog Road start as well. So that's in the tune of 450 million. So, you know, you've close to over half a billion euros in, in national roads. We've completed the, re, the realignment of the Bal to Clare Morris Road, road. Uh, and also there's some good news in relation to the Derivada to Mulrani Road where um, the um, selection of uh, an approved contractor will be progressing okay. uh, fairly soon. But, but, but we you, understand you, you, that we're not in control of the transport budget uh, and certainly there has been a lot of frustration in relation to the ratio of of, of public uh, roads to uh, public transport and we need to recalibrate that uh, and ensure that rural Ireland isn't forgotten when it comes to investment in roads and uh, working with councillors, working with um, Mayo County Council, um, roads like the, the Belmullet to Castlebar Road, roads like the N26, the N84 um, to, uh, to South Mayo, they need uh, priority investment and we have worked on the N17 from Knock to Colooney to try and get at get that back onto the TII's agenda and get adequate funding to move it on to the next stage. Uh, and, and we are actively seeking to do that. And um, while we've made a lot of gains in relation to the overpass and the safety issues around the N17, uh, and we'll continue to work uh, with TII and, you know, I'm very much committed to ensuring okay. that we have the best roads in this county uh, fit for its citizens. And uh, we have made progress, but more progress is required. Sinn Féin are promising to abolish the means test for the carer's allowance. Would you be in support of that? Well, certainly I, I value uh, all the work that carers perform uh, for the most vulnerable. And A lot of them don't think the government do because well, of the means test. Well, certainly uh, in the last two budgets, we have seen an increase in the means threshold uh, for carers and I think that's a, a significant step in the right direction. Minister Humphreys now has the income threshold up to €450 Euros for an individual, 900 for a couple uh, and that is an important indication but certainly I would like to see the abolishment of the means test okay. for carers and I know that there's an inter interdepartmental group now that is set up uh, to work on this and I suppose if given the opportunity, I'm sure we would like to, to further engage uh, with officials um, because this carers allowance sits with the Department of Social Protection. Uh, but carers provide a valuable um, effort in terms of uh, ensuring that people are kept out of hospitals and that and is a saving homes. itself yeah. to, to the exchequer. OK, has Mayo taken enough immigrants and refugees? Well, it has been a challenge, and there's no, there's no, there's no doubt about that. But do you believe we've taken enough? Well, uh, I think in relative terms, we we we, we have a, a, a 
an immediate response to where the challenges were around uh, suitable accommodation. Um, many uh, immigrants were welcomed into many communities uh, across this county um, and um, we have now moved to a more long, sustainable uh, measure around the provision of uh, a comprehensive ac- accommodation strategy for IPAS. Uh, and at the initial stage, uh, of course, there was um, difficulties with enhanced community engagement and, and dialogue um, where, where planning exemptions were uh, in, put in place that you know isolated many communities. Um, but certainly we need we need to continue to work with um, these immigrants because they do provide a, a, a value within our communities. We have a, a huge uh, challenge around uh, you know availability of um, staff for the hospitality, retail, construction sector, uh, and we see that they do make a valuable contribution to our society. Um, but in 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 that, we need to ensure that we do have. Uh, an accelerated decision-making process for those who um, come to this country seeking safe retu- refuge and, and asylum. Uh, and I have to recognise the effort that many communities have made in integrating them. Uh, and we have moved now to design a, a quicker process in time uh, around uh, international protection decisions. Okay. Uh, and I think more needs to be done in relation to moving away from uh, private um, private dev- private accommodation and moving to a more state-led approach. All right, there's loads of questions which obviously we don't have time to get to but I promise every person who has sent in a comment or a question to Alan Dillon uh, we will remove all of your uh, information and we will send your comments directly to him. There's so many in about self-employed people feeling they don't get a fair crack of the whip when it comes to having to take time off for being sick and so on, PRSI, etc. There's an awful lot of issues in in relation to derelict housing, uh, greenways, uh, not enough consultation going on there um, and, and so much more. And in 30 or sorry, 60 seconds, Alan, um, you want to be returned. I presume you'd like to be a senior minister and in the next government if, if all goes to plan. So what are you saying to the people of Mayo this morning? Well, a vote for, for, for me on November 29th means a, a trusted, honest and transparent TD for Mayo. You know, I've offered a strong, experienced voice for this county, uh, I'm rooted in my community and close to the issues. Uh, this will be a defining election in many ways, uh, and is crucial in Ireland for Ireland and how we shape our communities over the next five years. Uh, for the first time, we, we won't have a Michael Ring or, or an Indikini on the ballot paper. Uh, and for many of your listeners uh, who have contacted my office over the last four and a half years on many different issues, I've always been decisive in how I've tackled issues head on, uh, and I want to continue. Uh, to serve uh, the people of Mayo in government uh, and as a minister. Uh, and I also um, want to ensure that we can continue to deliver action and progress uh, that we've made over the last four years. Uh, and I would sincerely ask for the number one vote to ensure that Mayo uh, continues to make progress and that I can deliver for you and for this county. Alan, thank you very much for coming in and uh, joining us this morning. Of course, voting day is November 29th, which is a Friday. That's Alan Dillon uh, joining us in studio today, Fine Gael.